Hello, uh, <clears throat> I am back today, and uh, it is Friday the 13th. Oh, it's still March, yeah. Uh, there you go, R2D2. I mean, I, yeah, I forgot to change that a while back. Oh well, it's R2D2. And Friday the 13th. I only have two weeks or so left of this month, so why not do it now? Also, I shaved. I have bearded whatever I had on my face is gone. Because uh, I'm gonna film some stuff tomorrow. Uh, for a movie I've talked about uh, occasionally on this channel. It's a horror movie, which also fits with uh, the topic of today, being Friday the 13th. I mean, that's what I'm going to talk about. There you go. No glare. Um, I found out not too long ago, watched me a few months ago, actually. Whatever. Uh, this set is no longer available. Um... But then again, with concerning the copyright stuff of the series at the moment and the lawsuits, I guess it's not that surprising, honestly. Um, but yeah, uh, talking about Friday the 13th. I never really talked about Friday the 13th before. Outside of the canceled film that was supposed to come out last year, as well as the video game. Which I haven't really played a whole lot of. I played it for a while, like a week or so, but after a while, I just I couldn't get anywhere myself. Everybody seemed to be very like tagging, like, ganging up on others. Like Jason would be helping one person or another. For a while, I did get pretty fine, uh, like as a character, a lot longer than I usually had. Usually, I'm like the first or second person killed. But, you know, uh, yeah, and I was Jason. I didn't actually even kill anybody as Jason, plus I was trying to learn the controls. But, uh, whatever. Um, this is about the films. Um, I enjoy the Friday the 13th movies. Um, I think they're great. Um, I, <clears throat> out of all the horror franchises, it's, I'd say that's my favorite. Um character of Jason Voorhees is just interesting. Uh, of all the char uh, uh, horror killers, he's the one that <clears throat> I think is uh, just kind of more interesting. You know, he was just an innocent kid, honestly. He, um, he was different looking, you know, he was, uh, like they say, he was like a mongoloid. Uh, that's the words of... Uh, <clears throat> Tom Zavini, and uh, he was picked on, and then he drowned. Other got angry and went on a killing spree, and then she got her head cut off. And we find out he was actually alive, and he was an adult and saw this happen. Interesting opening and later reveal of the second film of that of the first movie. And yeah, and, and then the second film, you know, like when we first see Jason as the killer, uh, he has a, uh, uh, a sack over his head, which was hard for me to say and come to my mind. And uh, the third, he got a, his famous hockey mask. And the fourth film was the last movie, because it was called The Final Chapter. And then when they made part five, well... They lied with part four, when even though it was supposed to be the final movie. And they, you know, made it so Jason wasn't the killer again. Okay, but unfortunately, there's a guy running around in a hockey mask. You think it's Jason, but then it's some other guy. And Jason's only there in the very beginning. To see, uh, as in a dream or nightmare. And then seen as, uh, as hallucinations. 
In the very beginning, we get to see Corey Feldman reprise his role as Tommy Jarvis from Part 4. Who killed Jason? But then, unfortunately, the trauma Tommy had in Part 4... Oh, he just, he went to the mental uh, place, and they relocate him to a place in the woods, because, you know, that's safe. And then, uh, part six, Jason lives, because Tommy wants to destroy Jason's body forever. He, get, he impales him in the chest with a, a gated steel uh, beam thing or whatever that would be for like gates or not necessarily a gate but a fence that's fence yeah and then he uh, uh, you know he before he can like light him on fire because he has like lighter fluid and stuff spraying all over his body uh, lightning strikes and then revives him and uh, <clears throat> long story short uh you know, Tommy has to kill him again, and 4 through 6 is the Tommy Jar Jarvis trilogy. And part 7, Jason in, uh, fights a girl with telekinetic powers, so sort of like Carrie. 7 is also the first time we ever get to see Kane Hodder as Jason Voorhees, and he's a fan favorite and is to many the Jason. Uh, part eight, he goes to Manhattan, which was an interesting choice. Unfortunately, didn't see much of Manhattan because the studio, uh, I believe, only allowed them to like shoot a week or two in uh, New York and Manhattan, so. The entire film takes place on a boat, uh, going from Crystal Lake to New York. And you only get to see Manhattan uh, <clears throat> a little bit at the very beginning and at the end. Because in the beginning they're setting up like, oh, Jason takes Manhattan. But then the other places like the alleys, well, that was Vancouver. And yeah, they went to Canada. Uh, in uh, part nine, Jason goes to hell. In the very beginning, you know, he, he's about to kill a woman who later found out was you know, working with the FBI. And he, she draws him out of uh, hiding and he's just stalking this woman who did nothing wrong except, oh, I'm going to stay at Camp Crystal Lake. And here comes Jason about to kill her. And uh, she runs out of the house, runs. She jumps, and the FBI comes and shoots and kills Jason. Uh, I say kill because they blow him up. Sorry, I guess if I spoiled the FBI part, but you know, I'm kind of spoiling everything. Uh, I think everybody knows the deal if you're watching this video, right? Yeah. And anyway, if I, uh, throughout the whole film, Jason's soul is essentially still alive. It is able to have this doctor who's looking at the, like, performing an autopsy of sorts, even though Jason's blown up, looking at all of his body parts and such, and then he, uh, sees the heart beating, and then he eats the heart, which then transfers the evil soul and demons of representing Jason into that guy. And he goes and kills people before... Transforming, or transferring the soul into this, into another host, another body, and so on and so forth, until at the very end, you know, he's trying to kill, like, the, the only way, essentially, he can come back to life is if he kills a Voorhees, and puts his soul back into the body of a Voorhees, which he eventually does and succeeds at, and then... He's going to go and try and kill the main protagonist, because that's what Jason does. And, uh, he dies again, again because 
Friday the 13th, of Mor or actually maybe not, because uh, at this point, Part 9 actually is owned by New Line at this point, because Paramount, uh, apparently they were always ashamed of Friday the 13th, but kept making them, because they made money. But Part 8 didn't do so well. It isn't perceived as very likable. Or, not, not likable, but just isn't as fondly enjoyed by fans. I don't exactly hate it, but... For what it is, it's, meh, okay. I guess. Though I will say, the first eight films are like an installment in each chapter of a franchise or like a book. Part 9 comes in... It kind of ignores all that because can't use the Friday the 13th name. Paramount knows that. But they can use Jason and Jason Voorhees and spam the character. Essentially, they bought like the character and the location, essentially. Uh, apparently, they didn't buy the rights of the title Friday the 13th when Bought it from Paramount. I'm not exactly sure why New Line did that, but whatever. And then, uh, but at the very end of Part Nine, uh, Jason goes to hell. All seems fine. We also see Jason's mask is on the ground because he went to hell. Uh, you know, as the title suggests, he gets pulled down to hell by like hands and demons and such. You know, so he goes down there. See the hockey mask, the heroes, they're walking away, all happy, and it's all nice. And here some dog comes up, and uh, he goes and sniffs it. It's kind of buried. Puts his paw on it, and it lifts the rest of the mask up, so perfect and good shot. Dog walks away. It all seems nice and normal, and, you know, it's fine. Then all of a sudden, Freddy Krueger's hand and... Uh, Claw comes up, grabs his mask, and pulls it down to hell with him. And you hear him laughing. And they can do that because New Line now owns Freddy versus Freddy. Oh, it's not just Freddy Krueger, but Jason Voorhees. And for years they were thinking of, oh, we could make a Freddy versus Jason movie. But because they're owned by two different studios in the 80s, well, nobody could agree on this or that because, like, oh, well, this rights or that right. Those rights are ours, and this rights are ours. Then you'd have we'd have to have more rights. No, we'd have to own more of this movie. And compromise was not going to be a thing with uh, Paramount and New Line, but because New Line owns Freddy Krueger, and then they now uh, own Jason Voorhees, well, they can just uh, make that movie now. Unfortunately, that film stuck in development hell for many years. It wasn't until a decade later that we got that film. But before, but before we got Freddy vs. Jason, like a year before, we got Jason X. And, um... He goes to outer space, because so many go there. You know... Uh, why not? You know, futuristic. Uh, it's kind of a campy kind of film. Uh, starts off, you know, well, here's Jason Voorhees, you know, he's, uh, in Crystal Lake, he's gonna be transferred somewhere, can't die, um, but then he breaks out and tries to kill everybody around, but then... He doesn't kill someone. Or he does. But when he stabs him, um, he also, like he gets frozen in this thing. And this woman stabs him, and it's like, uh, she like dies, but it's also frozen as well. It's kind of odd and weird. But uh, later on, it's the future, and a bunch of people come looking around, they're exploring this place 
that used to be something, but then now clearly isn't. Excuse me. And uh, they find uh, the woman and Jason take them back. Essentially, kind of revive the woman. They also have Jason, who then gets thawed out because he was frozen again. Remember. And then she uh, is essentially warning, like, "No, no, you got to kill him because he's horrible." Meanwhile, uh, this woman took off Jason's mask and saw this. Was like, oh, no wonder you wore this mask. Uh, but then you know, he falls out. He uh, wakes up. Grabs her head, sticks it in, in, in this liquid nitrogen that's conveniently near near her. Uh, she's essentially dead because now she's her whole head and face is her face is frozen. So he pulls her out, sees her essentially like sees what's happened, and he just slams her face down onto the table and breaks into uh, thousands of pieces. It's actually a pretty cool kill, I gotta say. And as the film goes on, they eventually destroy Jason Voorhees after he's killed a bunch of people. And, uh, you know, seems like the end, but then nanobites come and, you know, uh, rebuild him, and now he's Uber Jason. He's got a metallic mask and metallic arm and legs, and he's mad and angry. New machete also. He's mad, and he's going around still killing some people. But then he uh, fights some guy, goes out to get sucked out into space, but then he here he comes, coming back. And then, before he can, some guy in a suit, space suit, as part of that crew, like explorers, essentially, comes back and grabs him, and then they all... They're near Earth, so as they're fighting, he, the dude in the spacesuit, takes Jason. And he's essentially kind of not necessarily riding him down to Earth, but he's using him as protection from the, you know, from breaking up essentially as they come to Earth. And yeah, so they get to like a Crystal Lake. So then finally we get Freddy vs. Jason, and, you know, for a while, uh, also, regarding um, Jason X before, we uh, we get to see Jason with uh, some red eyes. Yeah. That's also the very last time we see Kane Hodder as Jason Voorhees. He has not been in a movie in the franchise since. Unfortunate, but you know, it is what it is. No really reason was s seemingly said for why he wasn't in Freddy vs. Jason. He wanted to be in that film. Fans wanted to, him to be in that film. Uh, it seemed like Robert Englund wanted him to be in that movie, but then again, I think Robert Englund was just happy that finally Freddy vs. Jason is happening, and I uh, mean, it's just gonna be a fun time. Um, so with that all out of the way, uh, Freddy comes and says uh, how he basically needs somebody to help her, uh, he needs to get it out of hell and back into the conscious and into people's thoughts and dreams and he can lay their nightmares and kill them so he can become strong so he uses Jason to come back to life and he goes and kills people for him and people think oh it was Jason Voorhees or no Freddy Krueger but then someone and they eventually see him he goes to a party and kills a bunch of people well then they're like oh, that wasn't you know Freddy Krueger you know Jason you know or like he had like sweater like this sweater and a hat and Fedora and, glo and a glove with knives on them. Uh, you know, many of the early kills weren't like that. Yeah. 
so there's this battle them that you see or you see Jason's uh, get knocked out and he is in is not in the dream world because Freddy invaded some dude to try and handle him uh, and take care of the of Jason. But as he does so, um, he you know, gets killed. Then Jason he gets knocked out because he had something to knock out Jason. And then we see Jason and Freddy fighting in the dream world. And then, uh, yeah, it seemed to allude that Jason's afraid of water. interesting but anyway you know then the group of people they then go to take Jason's body to Crystal Lake so they can also try and revive the Jason to wake up and their plan is also you're gonna have someone else go into the dream world for Freddy to uh, bother and we also apparently see like oh like what happened with Jason and how he died and eventually became the way he uh, later became and uh long story short essentially Freddy uh, <laughs> he gets her this girl that went in there and but then she wakes up and when she does, she brings Freddy back into the real world. And we're now in this place where Jason is. He's woken up, he's angry, and he sees Freddy. And then those, these two f begin to fight. And then... Kill the... Uh, or some more people, a few other people died. And then... Jason gets his fingers cut off, and then he rips off Freddy's arm, and then there's a big explosion. And it's like, wow, that's it. And then here comes somebody with Jason's machete, and then we see it was Freddy. He's gonna kill the girl, but before he can, hear uh, Freddy's arm comes sh sh jutting through his chest. And, uh, he drops a machete, and then Jason falls back into the Crystal Lake. And then the girl takes the machete, cuts off his head, Freddy's head, and then that's it. The two go walk away, and then we see the Crystal Lake, and it's all foggy. Jason uh, comes up through the water with a machete in hand. He's walking, and then we see he has Freddy's head. He's brought it with him. I don't know why I'm doing that because he can't, I have nothing. But, you know, he's walking, and then he. Uh, uh, it looks like Jason won, but then we see close up of Freddy's face, or head, and he winks at the camera. And Fred laughs. And no sequel to that film was ever made. Despite various attempts to make one happen. With various interesting uh, thoughts. Like Michael Myers was thought to join them at a killing spree. Then one had a pinhead. And then another uh, with involving Ash Williams from Evil Dead. Which that idea actually became a comic book. So, you know, there you go. And then the most recent film is, um, uh, uh, the 2009 reboot. And essentially, that film just takes various elements of the first four movies and puts them together. And, um, I think it's a, a good f and decent film in the franchise. Good film, whatever. I enjoyed it, um, you know, 
essentially I'd be kind of sort of uh, re-illustrating re what I've just said earlier in the video. Uh, because essentially it's what it is is, yeah, see Jason as a kid seeing his mom get beheaded by a counselor. And essentially his mom kind of talks to him or whatever. As he sees a, like, a kill for mom. And we see Jason kill some people in the beginning of the film before it says the title card Friday the 13th. And one of the, the uh, camp counselors uh, is the sister of uh, of this guy that uh, the main uh, our pr main protagonist, it's sort of a parallel to Part Four, where the guy is looking for his sister who was in Part Two and got killed. So he's looking for her, and there's a bunch of people who gonna have a party. Because this rich douchebag has a it's a family cabin down there at Crystal Lake, and uh, he go, he's going you know, around trying to find his sister, and uh, basically one by one, Jason kills all these people. That are at this place, and we also find out Jason's been holding the sister of the guy uh, kind of hostage because he, it, it, the girl, kind of resembles his mom. And that's the reason why. So he doesn't kill her because of that. Um, but you know, eventually the brother. Finds her, rescues her, and uh, they uh, uh, end up in a some kind of place along the lake or the camp, and then there's like all these chains and this, yeah, whatever. I haven't seen I haven't seen it in a while, but he gets kind of like choked or whatever. With a chain that gets thrown into like gears, and then he gets stabbed, and then take his body and push it off of a uh, pier, uh, not dock. Push that off, and it's like, well, there you go. So. Yeah, the girl, she's sitting, and brother's there, looking at her. She's a bit, you know, tired because of being held uh, captive by Jason for quite some time. And he's a little distance away from his sister. And begins to walk towards her. But then here comes Jason bursting through the dock to grab her, and that's how the film ends. It's kind of a jump script, yeah. And yeah, that's kind of like an overview of the whole franchise. Probably could have been done better, but, you know, I don't know. I kind of just wanted just to talk about it in such a different way than I've talked about movies before. I enjoy the franchise. Yes, there are some films that aren't particularly the best. I'm not all that fond of some of the New Line stuff, um, myself. Um, but I watch them. And I do enjoy them. I might, I'm just not as fond of them to the point where I rewatch them over and over, let's say. Um, part four for me is the best of the series. It's just the most interesting to rewatch over and over. I think it has some of the best acting and writing. Ted White's fantastic as Jason. Um, I would say uh, he's tied as my favorite Jason with Kane Hodder. I guess possibly because part four is my favorite, and part of a reason, part of the reason why I actually keep watching that is because I think the performance Ted White gives as Jason Voorhees is fantastic. I just enjoy it. It's like until you get to Kane Otter, I think he's the best. And um, 
you know, uh, uh, Cisco and Ebert, you know, all these reviewers, they get, they trashed uh, Friday the 13th, the franchise as a whole, which is kind of interesting because usually at least the first of, let's say, these slasher franchises, some critics actually do give the first films praise. Like Roger Ebert said the first Halloween was a good film. And the first, uh, you know, Nightmare on Elm Street was a good film, but uh, Friday the 13th wasn't. Um, you could say it's because, well, you know, they just kind of ripped off Halloween. Well, yeah, but, you know, Victor Miller is essentially, uh, has always said, that's what happened. Sean Cunningham said to me, Halloween's making a lot of money, let's rip it off. So he watched the movie and... Uh, took some beats from that and set the film in a camp so he'd be away from everybody. No adult could just help you. You can't run next door. Be like, hey, hey, help, help, call the police. Uh, cause, you know, help is quite a while. Uh, you'd have to drive there. Um... The environment, I feel, is just very creepy and, in a way, unsettling. Um, more so than any other horror franchises out there. Um, but yeah, Friday the 13th is the one I, I just keep going back to. Every Friday the 13th, I watch the movies. Or I watch one of the documentaries. You know, There's some good stuff out there with Friday the 13th, even fan films. Some good fan films out there. Um, uh, I, I'd recommend watching this series. Um, perhaps you might like Halloween more, or Nightmare on Elm Street, or Hellraiser, Evil Dead, Scream, Child's Play, whatever. You know, any other franchise with Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Um, but for me, I think Friday the 13th is the best. Um, don't have to agree with me, you know. Uh, this is over 30 minutes. Uh, I didn't exactly uh, uh, mean for that to happen. Uh, but, you know, I just enjoy this franchise. The characters, I think, have some of the most interesting protagonists and antagonists. Um, you know, Jason Voorhees is great. Uh, it is also interesting for the first film, you know, it was uh, quite interesting when Pamela Voorhees, Mrs. Voorhees, was a uh, killer. It wasn't Jason. Um, he, I mean, he was in the first movie, but he was, he was as a kid. He was there at the end, drowning, and then he comes up and grabs Alice as a scare, jump scare, like of uh, Carrie. Yeah. So, uh, that's really, uh, well, I really have to say, honestly, uh, I enjoy Friday the 13th. Hope you have a happy Friday the 13th. Hope you just have a good day in general. Um, but yeah, um, until uh, next time, I hope you all, uh, do well. Uh, we'll be back. And um, have a good day. Have a good weekend. Um, and if you go to any uh, camps, uh, I'd say you just don't have sex, do drugs, drink alcohol or whatever, because you know bad stuff seems to happen. You know these films uh, kind of illustrate that. But if you if you are inclined to do any or all those things, uh, you've been warned. You know, tread lightly. But uh, yeah. Anyway, I'll see you guys uh, next time. Bye.